Hey friends, welcome to Aromatic Chat, the podcast that introduces you to registered clinical and certified aromatherapists around the world. Every other week I sit down with an aromatherapist to learn about their aromatic journey and how they use essential oils in their lives and their businesses. Aromatic Chat is produced by Lemon Balm Coaching. If you or someone you know is struggling with overwhelm, you'll want to reach out to Lemon Balm Coaching, transformational life coaching for the business of life. I'm your host, Melissa, your holistic life coach and registered aromatherapist. Before we jump in today, I wanted to share with you this five-star review from Angel Swan of the Better Postpartum Podcast. Angel says, I am so thankful for Aromatic Chat. I've always wanted to learn more about aromatherapy, but there is so much information out there and I don't have time to read it all. I love that I can just plug in my earbuds and learn from you. Thanks, Angel. I created this podcast so that everyone can hear from, find, and connect with the aromatherapist that meets their needs. Would you be open to taking one minute to leave a review on Apple Podcast? Your five-star review makes it possible for me to continue bringing these phenomenal aromatherapists onto the platform to share their stories. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Full disclosure as we head into today's episode, geography is not my strong suit. I had to look up where in the world my guest practices her aromatherapy and then pull back to see how it fits in with the rest of her continent. Welcome to episode number 47, Aromatic Chat with Melanie Kovac the creator and visionary behind Dropsmith. Melanie used her mad IT skills to create this online platform to help everyone understand aromatherapy. She also offers courses that help demystify the chemistry that makes aromatherapy work. Rather than me telling you about her, I think you'd rather hear from her directly. So let's get started so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to speak with you. If my memory serves correctly, you spoke at the AIA conference three years ago? I was a speaker last year and three years ago I had a workshop also on the uh, on Botanica with Joy Boyles. We had that workshop together and I was at this year's Aromatica Australia uh, everywhere. So yeah. <laughs> any pretty much any conference you mention, <laughs> you'll be fine. <laughs> I, oh, around. I, haven't around I haven't spoken at Naha's conference, but I was their guest for a webinar and wrote for their things. So there yeah. I haven't been a speaker yet. Well, if my memory serves right, you had a, obviously an aromatherapy background, but also wasn't it computers? <laughs> Good, yes. I'm an IT engineer. That's <laughs> okay. I went to a, a art high school. <laughs> so very artistic, which explains all the beautiful colors on Dropsmith. Yes. Yeah, I have both. Actually, they did a test on me and I use left and right brain equally. So wow. Whatever you want. <laughs> that's very rare. <laughs> because actually I was at the art school and then everybody had the other. Everybody was artsy and I had both. So I was kind of disappointed. But then they told me, but no, that's like the rarest thing. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, because then you're gonna be able to you're gonna be able to connect with just about anyone. Yes, that's how that's I guess how I created Dropsmith and everything I do, because I can talk to everybody in the industry. And that's one of the questions. That's my favorite thing to do. It's the connecting part. That's what I enjoy the best. I had to look up Slovenia. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find it? It's like, it so like tiny. Are you sure? I was like, where <laughs> is she in the world? And then I was like, oh, it's right above Croatia. Okay. It's two hours from Venice. Okay. That might be interesting to the crowd. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's between Croatia and and then there's Austria on one side. Oh, Austria, and, that's right. Uh, and Hungary. So it's a really cool place to be. Botanica 2018 was supposed to be here in Slovenia. Because of COVID, it was all canceled. It was so sad because we had planned so many things and it was beautiful because everybody can go at wherever they want it to be. Or- that is one of the great things about what COVID did is it made it possible for this yeah. to happen on a regular basis, be able to talk to people around the world. Like I just went out and told my husband, I was like, I had to look it up. She's in Slovenia. And he's like, oh, that's, that's really cool. Like I'm talking to someone in Slovenia. I mean, that's just really neat to me. 
Okay, can I ask you also, can I um, take a um, screenshot and put it on my Absolutely. Facebook that we are, that we are having? Okay, so Absolutely. I don't yes, forget. Oh, sure, go for it. Melanie, I'm actually super excited to get to talk to you because I did get to see you at the Alliance of International Aromatherapists conference two years ago and watched a webinar that you did for AIA as well. So I'm just, I'm thrilled to get to talk with you tonight. So it was great that um, I got invited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, a dropsmith is so unique and we'll, we'll get to talk about dropsmith. Where are you located in the world? In Slovenia. I really do live in Slovenia now uh, because I, I have a daughter and, and her dad is here. Is, is Slovenia where you're from? Is that where you grew up? No, I'm from, uh, I was born in Croatia and then I lived in Canada for a while. So uh, I, I kind of had myself as a Croatian and Canadian because it influenced my life so much and came back to Croatia and then I got married in Slovenia and then I'm here. Excellent. Still waiting for that beach on a tropical beach. It's coming. (laughs) Well, come on over. Anytime you want to come to Guam, you just let me know. (laughs) Oh, great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to note that as well. (laughs) I'll take you to all the very night. We have some beautiful beaches. We have over 45 different beaches on the island. I I need to note that down. Yes. So it's an option. I might move there. It's very small. What's what's excellent, even better. What's your lowest temperature I'm interested in? Um, I think it was 79 the other day, Fahrenheit. Should I be getting a plane ticket? (laughs) 79 Fahrenheit is 26. I'm moving. You are on my top list now. <laughs> now it is, it's a very, very small place. It's 212 square miles. Like the whole Excellent. island. It's I'm very tiny. It more and more. We oh. can do plenty of interviews. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Okay. Well, come to Guam, check it out. See if you like it. Who knows? Um, I'm, I'm going to Google that. <laughs> How old is your daughter? You mentioned eight, you have a daughter. Eight, eight. She just started school in, in 2019. So it was quite challenging. That's, that's hard on a mama heart. <laughs> yeah. We're here to talk aromatherapy specifically. And I know you have some very unique options for how to view aromatherapy. But before we yes. get into Dropsmith and everything that you offer, I just love to give everybody the opportunity to hear your story, right? How mm-hmm. did you end up in aromatherapy and doing what you're doing? I mean, I, I just find our stories so interesting. So how did you get, how did you end up here? Okay, so my story is, um, it's very curvy and wavy. I like to say that aromatherapy happened to me because actually looking back, it's a sequence of some insig- seemingly insignificant stuff, but then it came together to this. So as I told you before, I have an art, a love for the art. So I went to an art high school and then I studied computer science you know (laughs) and while studying there I literally um smelled this store and I entered it and asked what is this wonderful smell so this was about 20 years ago as I am quite a thorough person I I took a few books and started reading about it before I do anything I read and then I decided well this is really cool but um I think I need to know more if I want to use it For some reason, I even then knew that there's more to it and this chemistry thing, I need to understand it better. And I forgot about it. I said, when I'm going to have the chance, I'm going to study this thing seriously. And I forgot about it because I became an art director and it was going well in that direction. And then I met another friend who said, oh, you know, I just finished aromatherapy right here in Croatia. Oh, we have that. So then I entered it which was so not typical of me because I like so many things and why would I enter aromatherapy? And I decided to quit everything and do aromatherapy. Who knows? Crazy, crazy person. I was just going to introduce people to this lovely therapy that's so easy to integrate mothers. And, you know, people were asking me to teach them because there wasn't really aromatherapy. But then other things started happening to me, like I said. They asked me to teach pharmacists. I'm like, wow, I'm not gonna, but I don't say no. So I started studying because I knew I had like six months to a year to, to teach these pharmacists. So I studied like crazy or, uh, chemistry, pharmacology. And then what happened is because they wanted to know more about clinical aromatherapy, I started studying clinical aromatherapy. 
learning from Rihanna and Madeleine, going on conferences. And what happened, I started learning from a lot of nurses. And then it's like they have a radar and then find me. Now, now nurses are interested in me, so I'm teaching. And then, and then you know, it's literally been throwing me around and I'm just following it. And, uh, and I wake up and I've been here for over a decade in this industry doing pretty much everything. And it, it happened. It really happened to me. I just said, okay, I'll do this. And then I study it. And the next thing comes, I'll do this. Fine. Okay. And then people like Rihanna tell me, no, no, you're going to write an article. But you really, I never wrote an article. No, you're going to do it. It's fine. And then I said, okay. And then I never wrote an article. So it's still going on like that. And then I said, I will stop teaching. I'm just so exhausted because I created Dropsman. And that's another similar story. And then everything went online and people kept asking me questions. I said, okay, fine. I'm going to do one class online. And now it turned into so many classes. So it's still happening to me. <laughs> but that's my story. Aromatherapy happened to me and I love the community. That's what keeps me here. I'm too curious. I usually just stay for a few years. But it's this lovely community of people and this variety that comes with aromatherapy that keeps me here. It's just endless. It's beautiful. I love that a door would open and you would just walk through it. You know, somebody would give you an opportunity and you'd say, okay, I love that. I love that spirit. That's beautiful. Because how many of us get the opportunity to do something and we go, oh, wait a second. I need to research that. I need to ask someone if it's okay. I need to check over here. I need to look at my schedule. But you just said, okay, I'll figure it out. Yes, literally. And that's how Dropsmith happened. Um, I wanted to do it for so many years. Actually, my friend of mine, who's a programmer, he said, let's do an app. And I said, oh, great. I have an idea. And I was doing it for years and I was going to quit. I had my daughter, so I had no time. And then Rihanna told me, Melanie, you're going to do it. I said, but Rihanna, how am I going to get all the references? You'll figure it out. I said, okay. <laughs> and then I actually did it for years. It was haunting me. And then when Rihanna said, you're going to do it. And then I said, okay. If Rhiannon says, I, I have to do it, what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Rhiannon said, I have to do it. Therefore, I will show up and do it. If she thinks it's worth the while, then I'm going to do it. <laughs> but I even have a feeling that if Rhiannon hadn't said do it, you probably still would have. Because it seems like oh, that's, it was that's really your haunting me. Yes, yeah. yes, it was really haunting me. It wasn't just her. It was uh, many people asking me, so when is this going to be finished? You know? <laughs> Beautiful. I love that. So you brought up drops. Well, I've brought up Dropsmith. You've brought up Dropsmith. Let's go ahead and just talk about Dropsmith. There, you know, I'm assuming that there's going to be people listening to the podcast who have no clue who Melanie is and what Dropsmith is. So, what's Dropsmith? Dropsmith is my baby. <laughs> How do I start? A Dropsmith is a platform where you can find out anything. Well, in my opinion, what's relevant about essential oils. Uh, the idea was because I was searching for so many answers and it took me decades and I had been teaching so many different people from pharmacists to hairdressers to you know everybody in between <clears throat> I even had I don't know a chemistry doctors in my class which is quite intimidating and then and then holistic healers with any anyways uh, so I have all these people coming to me asking for questions distillers connecting them to laboratories and that's how I then created Dropsmith I wanted to put all that together make sense out of it how is that research relevant to the practitioner you know and then also I have such great um, appreciation for hands-on experience and a lot of these case studies are in journals and not many people read them or even have them so I quote them my idea with Dropsmith was to bring all this together for somebody who doesn't know where to even begin you just type in, I don't know, pain, and it pops up all the oils for you that are associated with that. So it like takes up hours, years of searching. And then you find information that is relevant. So everything is quoted. You can, and the link takes you to, if it's an abstract, to the abstract. If it's a book to the book, if it's the um, journal to the journal. So you get to meet these people. And with books, I know all these people. I asked for their permission, even though I, uh, legally I could do it anyway. And I purposely linked it to their page. So the person who is interested in that information can meet the author, you know, because they have a different history. Some people are aromatherapists, some are pharmacists, others are interested in, in, I don't know, wellness. So it was kind of my way of putting everything together and making it easier for people to 
find the information like literally in a click. There's so much information to consider when you're looking at a single essential oil and then a blend, it's mind blowing. And I didn't even mention the chemical components, which we have 4,500 of them in there. And they also have their properties, but that's just too complex for a podcast to wow. go into. <laughs> wow. So would Dropsmith be for anyone? In my opinion, it's for anyone because uh, I literally was teaching anybody, you know, I had thousands of um, lectures, not just for professionals, but uh, for anybody who would listen, I had, um, I'm sure at least a hundred of lectures for, for common people at libraries, at events, talking about anything you want from aphrodisiacs to how to use it for Christmas. So I really considered all of these people. The thing is, and this is what happens when people come to my class, they tell me they are sometimes intimidated by me and, and how I teach because I teach through chemistry. And if they knew they'd come sooner because I teach it in a way so that really everybody can understand. So I, I, I did that with Dropsmith. It's, I wanted to bring these people closer together because I can see that they have sometimes very different viewpoints or or ways of expressing the same viewpoint, but so different that they don't come together. And it's sad because we all love the same thing. We all love these essentials. We should come together and then and share it, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's my mission. <laughs> that's great. So like if I was just if I was just an essential oil enthusiast and I wanted to be able to use what I have easier and better, Dropsmith would be for me. Absolutely. If you if you as like a mother and want to use the essential oil on a child, it would be, I would really recommend it because it comes with safety recommendations as well. So for example, if you have five oils at home, you can go to drops and check out for each one of those oils, what they can be used for, their safety recommendations, contraindications, so you can use it with more confidence, safety, you know, and ideas. Sometimes you have an oil and use it for two things. Well, if you go to Dropsmith, you'll have like at least five more ideas on what to do with this oil. And then five links to go and check out what people are saying about it more. And these are people who are relevant in the industry. We check all our information. Right. Right. That's beautiful. <laughs> so is Dropsmith a website or an app that you can use on your phone? Well, it's a website. We are redoing it all the time. For now, it's meant to be used on, on the computer because also there's so much information You seem like the type of person that has vision. Yes. You can can see, you can see the big picture. Yes. And it drives me crazy not to be able to manifest it right like yesterday, but I do, I do. I'm a very, very visual person and that's why Dropsmith and everything I do is so visual. And I notice a lot of people in aromatherapy appreciate that, that we, a lot of us are creative and we go into it because of creativity and it helps them. A lot of my students or colleagues go, oh, wow, I can finally see the chemistry. One of my students really literally wrote that the other day. I can finally visualize the chemistry. And like, yes, yes, that's so cool. That's what I want to do. To make these things that seem complex, simple, because I think everything can be explained in a simple way. You know, There's no need for us to fear chemistry or research. There is a way to present that, that everybody can use and benefit from, and we mm-hmm. should. Okay. Well, you said one of your students said something the other day. So you're in the thick of teaching right now? Yes. I started an online teaching website, I guess. And again, it happened accidentally. Uh, I said, no, I will not teach online. You know, I want everybody to smell my oils when I'm teaching. We started with one course and it turned out. So I just love my students. This new way of teaching that I learned or created or, or came about is that I start a course, I have like a fundamental, uh, 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 the the core of the course that I want to teach, but then the rest of it, I create with my students. And it's so cool. It's according to their questions that I make the bonuses and I call them evergreen bonuses as I keep creating them. And it's so nice because I get to hear their feedback. It takes a while for them to open up, to tell me what they're really curious about. You know, no question is stupid, but they need to hear that a lot of times to actually ask the question. And then it opens up this whole new world where I get to answer whatever they want. Because for me, everything's obvious. You know, you forget you're in this for so long and you don't know, like, I don't want to waste their time with this. But then I see they really need to hear it. So yes, I have, I think, five or six courses now that are available. Some I launch two or three times a year. Some are available all the time. 
and I keep making new videos. <laughs> yeah, That's it's... good though, because that, that shows that you're not just resting on past laurels. You're, you're continuing to create, continuing, yeah. you know, it's, continuing it's all to... brand new. I really got tired of teaching, um, of teaching the standard aromatherapy, you know, you know, at university, at college, uh, even in Turkey, I used to teach quite regularly uh, central chemistry. So I got tired of that. And I really thought I would quit teaching, except in, in conferences, like you mentioned, where I can teach more, where I can teach something. So this concept I have with my uh, website, I don't teach regular I teach everything else. So I expect you to have a certain knowledge. I do have a, a basic course as well, uh, but still with my twists. And then I can teach you everything else. So this is where I think I can contribute the most, you know, the stuff that people are confused about or have misunderstandings or aromatherapy has, you know, different conflicts. So I, I'm here to support all that if possible. The people that come to you have already taken some basic aromatherapy courses. They're not just going to come to you as an enthusiast right off the bat. It depends. Uh, it's, it's how much are you ready to put into your um, knowledge? No, I think anybody can come. And it's so nice that you mentioned. Uh, I, currently, I have three um, retired nurses in my class. Uh, that are most active is that so wonderful these are women who practically they said they finished their career and that now they can finally do what they love and oh, the question awesome. I got two days ago was for our 107 year old father so I'm gonna help her uh, understand her blend for him can you for imagine her 107 year old seven. father yes so this is I'm telling you uh, it's for all sorts of people if you're willing to put in the time. And these are my best, most, most enthusiastic people, retired nurses at, oh at the moment. Word. I it's love really, that. really cool what comes to me. It's a, it's a blessing. So you had mentioned about concepts, things that people might not understand. And that's kind of where you, mm -hmm. you tend to shine. In your opinion, what would be like one big concept in aromatherapy that that is misunderstood well there are so many things that we become confused with but thinking of this uh question with the blend 107 year old father she wrote an excellent question pretty much an essay on where she's been to another school and her way of landing now that she's learning with drops in the hand with me she's not sure anymore and i had similar questions from people who came from other schools and i kind of allowed them to or try my best to see, okay, this is a different way of a, a different approach to blending. There's nothing wrong with it. But what I teach is actually the core, or I see it as core, is the chemistry. And it can it can support everything. It can support your intuition if somebody start the blending from that point of view. Or if you're starting to blend from smell point of view, you can understand the smell through chemistry. Also emotional. So from whatever aspect she's coming from, the knowledge I like to share is like, it's like really, I feel it's, it's the basis. It, and I feel it's the easiest because it's like one plus one is two and nothing can shake that. So when they understand this chemistry that they're so afraid of, and it's, it's not about the molecules, it's about what to do with it, you know, and understand their properties and how to perceive an essential oil from that point of view. It can support whatever it is that you are that you learned before. It can help you appreciate it and learn it more. It just give you more confidence. And at this moment, everything you do needs to be supported by scientific research. And then that can help you have a, um, a relevant answer. So that's why I think I can bring it together. Whatever your question is, if it's about smell or if it's about intuition, I can bring it on to chemistry. <laughs> right. So it's it's really about the chemistry. I don't teach um, organic chemistry. I don't. I teach you what to do with, with the GCMS report, because now that's also very popular to, to get our GCMS report. But then you look at these numbers and you're like, well, I have it. What are you going to do with it? You know. So yeah. that's what I do. I say, OK, so now you have this oil and you have it has these chemical components. What does that tell you? I don't talk too much about the chemical. I tell you, what does it tell you? So, you know, if lavender has a lot of linalol, linalol has like 50 useful properties we can work with, but so do 50 other essential oils. So then I can show them the similarities and differences of ratio, oils that have 
pretty much the same components but different ratios and it, it's a lot of playing actually it's not it, it's a lot of color <laughs> and mm -hmm. playing and i show them how to view these essential oils in in um, in a different light i should learn how to say that in a more appealing way <laughs> i think you said it just right because we're talking about essential oils here. It's not like we're just talking about uh, this concrete topic. You know, like you said, you have lavender and it's got all this linalool in it, but it's got other chemical constituents in it as well. Yeah. So we're talking about something that has multiple layers. It's yes, and then I can explain all the layers with it. Like when they ask me, why is every lavender different? Well, I can explain it to you because it might be also they still at a different time and then we come back mm -hmm. to chemistry <laughs> mm -hmm. or why is this one more sedative than the other well we can go back to chemistry and it will become clear right you know, and then you will you can apply it to any oil not just lavender anymore i think it empowers people and i just keep coming back to like the essential oil enthusiast who might just see a bottle of lavender and go oh lavender but not knowing where it was grown, how it was distilled, where it, you know, where it came from, because all of that affects the chemical constituents that are in that particular lavender. I have a mini course on that too. So that's for everybody, for example, I call it uh, Aroma Alphabet. And there I explained the distillation and some of the terminology and a lot of, uh, let's say, foggy stuff that comes with that. A lot of people think they understand uh, and they do understand distillation and quality. I address quality there. So I think that's a course for everybody, for example. And uh, I demystify a lot of stuff there. That's beautiful. I love that, the demystification part. Yes. And a lot of people think understanding chemistry will take the romance out of it, but it's not true. You will actually appreciate it better because you will see the magnitude, the beauty, the, the, you know, the interconnection of everything. It's actually the opposite. It supports whatever it is that you're doing. That's great. The, sci the science actually supports what we do. It can. It's just a, it's a way of, a, of your approach, you know. I see, I see connection in everything. <laughs> I have a feeling you're a connector by design anyway. Yes. <laughs> because that, that's even part of your dropsmith. Here's the research, and I'm going to connect you with the person who wrote it. So Yes, yeah, yes, yes. It's beautiful. Oh, I love to do that. Yeah, and one of your questions, if I can jump into your own question. Absolutely. <laughs> what would be my favorite case study? Or, or that was actually going to be my next question. So perfect. Yeah, I read perfect mine as well. <laughs> Yes. So uh, I was thinking about that one. And uh, it was, it's actually a project. It connects to what we just talked about. While I was creating Dropsmith, I created two projects uh, that also came to me. Like I said, they happened. And one was the, the, what I told you about React and how to get the research. And the way I got the research was I went to faculty of pharmacy. I came there and I told them what I want to do and that if we can make projects for their students who are graduating to do research for the oils and in return, I can get them any oil and CO2 extract I want because I know so many people and they were thrilled to do it because uh, they wanted to uh, explore it as well. So with this project, I got to meet even more distillers. I already worked with a lot of distillers because they didn't know where to get their research done. So the, the distillers got the GCMS for free, which is very expensive. And a lot of these little distillers don't have money for it. They got tons of projects. They have oils they would have never gotten. I got them oils from all over the world. It was beautiful, beautiful how that was. And the second project that came out of that is because, because I knew these, all these new distillers, mm -hmm. I was able to create I created um, once a month, I would do a free uh, gathering for, for medical professionals to use aromatherapy in, in their field. And there was a lot of nurses working in palliative care and they're such hands-on women. And they wanted to do something for the oral care. And they had this recipe for, uh, we had a lecture on the recipe for oral care. And in like five minutes, we said, okay, I can get you the distillers. The there was an ex-student of mine there who offered to do to donate um, the, um, the material, the bottles. Mm -hmm. And in a month, we had a study, you know, uh, wow. that everybody, everybody had hydrolax for free. They had the material for free. They had the approval from their superiors to apply this. 
for, and we had such excellent results. And we have so many, so many hydrolytes. I had a guy bring his hydrolytes. He was driving for over 10 hours to bring these hydrolytes to the woman. And they were all wow. so happy and enthusiastic to do it. I was crying when I was reading the results. They were so great. I think you might be surprised how many people would want to read that. So I would love to get the <laughs> link so that we can put that in the show notes. Okay. That would be really, that would be really great. Because I actually was reading articles today. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> we, we're in a field of nerds. So we kind of. <laughs> yes, I love that. <laughs> I feel at home. <laughs> we kind of all kind of sit around and read journals and <laughs> articles and things. Uh, <laughs> I am curious if you have a favorite essential oil or if you have a favorite profile in Dropsmith. I prepared the myrtle for you because I was teaching about it uh, a week ago. Why I chose myrtle is not it's close to me as in, as in physically and I like the plant, but is because it, it has tons of research, but people don't talk about it that much. Mm -hmm. And it's so useful and um, you can use it for children as well. And it has chemotypes, something that many people I see still don't know that myrtle has chemotypes and you don't find it. And chemotype in in the in the stores or, or distillers as well. So this is the one I like to talk about because I see Myrtle as such a beautiful blend already. You have just the perfect amount of one HCL to support pretty much any infection or respiratory system or circulation or whatever. And then you have enough of variety of monotropies in there for it to support, you know the one eight signal and you have some beautiful esters and oxyphobes in there to make the more flowery smell and and to make it more safe to use mm. its specific alcohols. And when you look at a myrtle, it's already such a beautiful blend of, of components that brings a big variety to it. I love I yeah. love how you're talking with your hands also. <laughs> yeah, I see it, you know. I see you're like myrtle is like it's it's perfect. It's it's whole. <laughs> It protection. why would you mess with a myrtle you know what what are you gonna put in there that's gonna make it better come on i challenge you <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great so what are you working on right now that's got you really excited i know we've talked about drop smith we've talked about your courses what are you working on right now? And it doesn't even have to be aromatherapy related because, you know, the purpose of my podcast is for people to get to know you. Plenty. I'm doing, I'm developing Dropsmith and my courses, but as you, you really pinned me, I am homeschooling now. <laughs> and it was a tough decision, but you know, I've been teaching for 20 years, um, all sorts of things, not just aromatherapy before I was teaching other things. And uh, I see this little, beautiful most important person in my life struggle and I'm thinking you know she's the one I need to be teaching <laughs> so uh, first month I thought I was crazy how am I going to do this too you'll come back to that feeling regularly yes Just like it. once a month don't you <laughs> uh, but then after a month uh, I see the results and uh, it's been a good choice it's been a good choice so that's, that's beautiful. what I'm doing now. I'm being the mother I always wanted to be. <laughs> oh, I love that. I homeschooled my kids also. So yeah, you'll get, you'll, you'll get that crazy feeling pretty regularly, but then you see the result and you go, okay, okay. We're on the right track. <laughs> yeah, it was a tough choice, but uh, I think it's for her. It, it was a good one, especially at this moment. Yeah. The way the world is and the way school systems are, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I, I saw the impact it has on her. So um, the best thing about homeschooling for me and my kids still thank me for it. My kids are oh. older. My youngest son is almost thirty. They'll they'll say to me, "Thank you for teaching me how to think on my own," exactly. because for me, that's really what homeschooling was about. It was was teaching my kids how to learn, teaching my kids how to think, exactly. use their critical thinking skills in every day. I applaud you for making that, <laughs> that hard decision because it is a hard decision to go against the flow and go against the grain. 
Yeah, is is homeschooling popular in Slovenia? It's available and I actually use this moment as an opportunity because there was uh, one moment when they asked us, you either agree to these terms or you take them in online schooling. I said, well, I don't agree to these terms. <laughs> and uh, it's I've been thinking about this anyway. So it was a great opportunity for me to, to take her out. And I still keep in connection with the school because she has beautiful teachers. But as I'm getting results, I think I'm going to keep her home. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, whatever is best for her. You know? And like yes. you said, I see that she wants to come to the bottom of the page. And that's not the point. That's not the point. It's like understanding what is. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Had a discussion with uh, one of the teachers yesterday. Like, oh, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I want to see her understand. Yeah, and think on your own and figure things out. And yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, ask questions. Ask questions. Why? Mm -hmm. Why is it like this? Why can't it be like that? You know, right. What's wrong with that? <laughs> and why is it wrong not to understand something? You know, I don't understand it. Explain it. To me. It's a good question. It's not being stupid. It's about, it's actually quite the opposite. I don't understand. Exactly. You're not supposed to. <laughs> right. right. Let's learn it. So yeah. I love that. You're in the group of aromatherapists that are teaching. You're in the group of aromatherapists that are paving way the way for other aromatherapists to come up and understand these, these concepts. How do you see aromatherapy changing or where do you see aromatherapy heading in the future? I, I really don't know, but I know where I want it to go. And that's what I'm doing with Job Smith and my teaching, but mainly with Job Smith. And that's putting all these skills together. You know, I see too much separation. All of these people are beautiful, all of these skills, whether I'm working with scientists or my nurses, I love them so much, or distillers, they're such a completely different category, you know? Uh, and then these people are supposed to be talking to the people who are going to analyze their oils in the laboratory. We're just interested in these chemical components. And it's so fascinating. I met several chemists who are not interested in how to apply this at all. That's why they asked me to teach their students, for example, because they are not interested in what these chemical components do to the humans. But it's their point of view and it's fine. So this is where I see aromatherapy that it has developed in so many areas and we have so much great information. So I'm finding ways to bring it together. So this amazing new research is available to the people who are working with it. But the people who are doing the research are not researching the things often that these people need. We have evidence what lavender does. Can you please now test another oil on breast, you know? Or okay you can i have so much research on time can you please tell me which chemotype you're talking about because they don't think that's important for us you know so this is where i would like to put my effort into bringing these people together uh scientists with distillers distillers directly with the people who are using their stuff taking the people who are using essential oils and taking them physically to see how much plant material goes into that bottle. So it's fine that you pay that much for it, you know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. So, and you will actually tip the person after you see how much oh, work. <laughs> oh, yes. work. You're going to pay three times as much once you understand the effort they're doing. And then it rains on the day that they pick and, and, and they lose the whole deck. So, this is where I would like to see aromatherapy going for everybody to take a look at the other side, to appreciate it, to find a common language because we can. And perhaps a, a, one of the things that would be nice is to have common definitions for the same thing, you know? Ask an aromatherapist what is an essential oil. I do this in every class and people block on me. They don't know what to say because they have such difference of opinion. It shouldn't be an opinion. We should all have a, for what is a hydra, what is an essential, what is an aromatherapist? We should all have the same definition for those. You know, how are we going to build anything if we don't have something we agree on and then we build on that? So that's, that's what I'd like to contribute. Yeah, no, I find that very interesting. I just spoke with Rhiannon Lewis a few weeks ago for the podcast, and she's doing the same thing in a different way. You guys are on the same page walking the same path together. I love that. Thank you. 
my pleasure. <laughs> I, no, it's appreciated. It's a, and especially for connectors, right? Because I'm also a connector. So con, for connectors, it's hard to see people so disjointed. <laughs> Why can't we all just get along? <laughs> yes, let's get together and make this thing happen. You're a visionary. You see the big picture. I love that. To me means you're an inspiring person because you're inspiring people to look at things in a new way, to experience essential oils from the chemistry, but in a fun way instead of that dry science. Thing. But I want to, <laughs> I would love to know who inspires you. First of all, it's my students, like I said, it, and not just students, everybody I get in contact with, they ask questions and then I seek for the answers. As we mentioned, Rhiannon several times, I'm going to go with Rhiannon as well. She has been a true inspiration. I discovered her, but after she discovered me, she's taking me under her wing. She keeps sending me messages now in these two years that um, I focus on being a mother. Like I said, she's been saying, Melanie, are you okay? I don't see you on social media anymore. Are you okay? Are you sure? And then I said, oh, yes, again, and I'm fine. I'm just being more at home. Okay, just making sure. I don't see you now, I can. <laughs> I'll come, Rihanna, and I'm just teaching. <laughs> so she's been really there for me. And um, and like you said, she's this connector and she's somebody to, to model definitely how she's so eloquent and never hurting anybody with her words, always considering everybody. But it would be mean just to mention her there is Madeleine who's also checking out for me and there whenever I have a question, especially in palliative care, because I have all these nurses to work with, she's there. Debbie from um Archie she's so supportive. Countless people. It's a beautiful community. They all round up. Awesome. So how can people find you and what you're doing in the aromatic world? I know we've got Drop Smith, but you also have your own personal website. Is that and I think that's where your courses are, correct? Yeah, it's called Melody Method. And this is um, my team here supporting me that I have to have my own method because I created this and it, I need to step out of the shadow, you know? <laughs> so that's why it's called Melody Method. Um, you can find me on Facebook. I share different things. Job Smith is more professional as in more scientific language. Although I always try to keep it, um, you know, understandable for everybody. Melanie Method is more me and this goofy person you're talking to now. So I'm a bit more free with my language and how I teach. In our last few minutes together, I just always like to hand the floor over to my guest and whatever words you would like to leave the listeners with. I think every, and this is actually from Andrea, uh, you know, uh, from Aroma Head. And she said, be very careful how you say things because everybody has their own point of view of aromatherapy and you should respect that. I think that's very, very good piece of advice. Uh, keep it with me. I, then if she wanted to warn me, then I triple or, or quadruple or a million check everything I do that I don't offend any um, of my colleagues. It really, aromatherapy is for, for all of us. And we should have the space to experience it for ourselves. We should come together and not tear each other apart. There's space for all of us. Yeah, I think that's the biggest takeaway. Uh, because such a small industry, we think we don't have space, but just stick with it and do what's really yours and it will come to you. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Melanie. You're welcome. My pleasure. <laughs> wow. What a joy to speak with connector, self-proclaimed goofball, and educator Melanie Kovac. Her final words were so profound as she quoted Andrea Boucher of the Aroma Head Institute. Everyone has their own point of view and we should respect that. Of course, Melanie was speaking specifically about aromatherapy, but honestly, this applies to all of life. Each one of us views life through a different lens, a lens that we developed early in our existence. We experience good and bad things and then we create meaning about those things. For example, Whenever my husband is upset, and it does not matter about what, for years I took it personally. I would think he was upset with me. That point of view affected everything I did from cooking dinner, to raising my kids, to choosing a career. This belief was wired into me early in my life, and I've had to work with counselors and coaches to understand this and then overcome it. Being aware that everyone views the experiences in this life in their own unique way makes it possible to have compassion for them, 
even when their ideas and methods are different from yours. Many times we respond out of habit with methods that go against who we truly want to be. Consider this your invitation. Reach out and schedule your free discovery call if you're finding that your reactions just don't match up with who you desire to be. Thank you so much for joining me today as I chatted with Melanie Kovac of Dropsmith and The Melanie Method. It was so much fun connecting with her inspiring personality. Are you a registered clinical or certified aromatherapist? Would you like to be featured on an episode of Aromatic Chat? I'm putting a link into the show notes for you to reach out and let me know. Just click on that link and that'll get the bottle rolling. Aromatic Chat is produced by Lemon Balm Coaching, holistic transformational coaching for the business of your life. You can find and connect with me, your holistic life coach, and registered aromatherapist on the web at lemonbalmcoaching.com. I will see you next time with our next episode. Until then, peace, love and aromatics.